Hey, my name is Brenner, and this is a brief visual explanation of the semi-Lagrangian advection scheme. But first of all, what is this scheme used for? You have to remember that many differential equations that describe how systems evolve over time, such as fluids, heat, or just pure convection, have a term in common. This term is responsible for the advection of some variable given a velocity field, and the semi-Lagrangian advection scheme is a numerical method that can be used to calculate it. Let's use a simple one-dimensional wave as an example. The y-axis can be viewed as a quantity of interest, and the x-axis is our spatial domain. We will assume that all points of the wave are subjected to a constant velocity field. In other words, all parts of the wave are moving with the same velocity, so there's no deformation. Because of how computers work, we have to discretize our wave. This means that the computer only sees the wave on discrete values. So when the wave moves, this is what the computer actually sees. Now let's say that we know where the wave is at a given moment. After a time step, this is how much the wave traveled. Therefore, the discrete values in our grid should somehow change and look something like this. The trick is to imagine that the grid points are particles and then move them in the opposite direction the wave was traveling. However, we can't forget that we only know the y values at discrete locations represented here by the black dots. What we can do is to simply interpolate the values between them. You can see that this introduces some error because the interpolated green curve does not exactly match the blue one, but it might be good enough depending on the accuracy you need. So we just need to check the y values returned by the interpolation at the blue dot's x coordinates. After that, we just have to update the current values with the recent interpolated ones. As you can see, we end up with something that is not 100% accurate, but this is the case with numerical methods. There is always an error. So, to summarize, we have to treat the grid points as particles and move them in the opposite direction of the velocity field, and then we calculate the values of the quantity of interest at these locations, with an interpolation method of our choice. And that's it. I hope you find this explanation useful, and see you another time.